Wow. Delicious. Another one? No, thank you. I'm gonna eat the meat, you eat the seeds. KitchenAid. That was aggressive. KitchenAid. KitchenAid. Oh. Ow. Oh, 50 one. bucks with all this stuff right here. What is this thing? That? You put this in boiling water and you airtight seal your food and then you cook it. In the bag? Yeah. Really can like, you cook a steak? I guess you could. Uh, I mean, you can pretty much cook anything. Can you cook some ice cream? No. No. Brandy. What? We doubled our money on this unit. And we still got that thing to get checked out. We do. You were right. I was wrong. Boom! Wait, 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 wait. Let me record this. No. Tell it to the kids. Right here? We're meeting renowned executive chef Pace Webb to see if this bag can cook up some profit. Let's set it over here, because there's a plug here. I know we need to test it out first. First off, what I don't I can't pronounce it. Sous vide. That. So sous, you've heard sous chef, right? Right. Vide means vacuum, so under vacuum, which is exactly what we're doing. We're putting food under vacuum with this vacuum sealer. So the idea is to keep all the moisture in the food so it works great for really hearty vegetables or cuts of meat. So you can pretty much use this for anything you don't want to dry out. That's right. What this is going to do is has coils right here where it's going to conduct heat depending on what we set the thermometer at up here. Right we now. need to see <laughs> if the vacuum sealer works first and foremost before yeah. we get excited about this. Nothing's so tested. We're not going to have like boiled steaks. That's nasty. You got to vacuum seal them first, OK? And see. Okay. So I close it like this, Kay. and then look at that. And then when it goes off, you're done. Okay. Oh, there we go. See? That's what we're looking That's for. That's a perfect seal. That's a perfect seal. Now we're going to put some food in there. All right, now we have to suck all the air out. That's what you're looking for. Wow. Voila. So these are all sealed up and gorgeous, and we're just drop them in and leave them in for about an hour. Bye-bye. I see. See? You gotta get the air out. Oh, yeah. Look oh, yeah, at that. Perfect seal. Look at it. Nothing. I'm gonna put my wallet in there and throw it in the pool. It's taking a really long time. Oh, okay. There we go. It's been an hour. I'm sure these are perfect and done. So, the chops are ready, and I know that's the payoff, but we're looking for a little bit different kind of payoff. <laughs> What's this stuff worth? Considering that it is lightly used, all okay. in, I would say 700. 700 bucks? <laughs> That's great. I told you. But we've already like almost tripled our money on this unit. Another 700 bucks. It's just, it's like gravy on a pork chop. <laughs> Speaking of that. You ready? Let's eat. Okay. Wow. Delicious. Is it good? It's amazing. We should cook all our meals in a bag. I know, totally. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I've ever been able to cook. No. <laughs> you know what this is? I think it's for apples. We used to have one of those when we were little. Put your apple on there. And then it's in a curly tube, or twer or curly whatever. It's gotta be at least five bucks. What the hell is this? My god, this thing. Maybe it's a giant apple peeler. Oh, perfect peeler. I think you're right. My god. They do got spikes. I don't know. Put your hand in there. No. How else are we gonna crazy? see if it works? Is this cool? I don't know if it's cool yet, but I do know one thing. It's appealing. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Let's go. Mary, you know we're supposed to go that way. But isn't this fun? Adventure. <laughs> hey, stop sign, stop sign. Oh, my god. Sorry. School form. Do they teach the veggies how to grow themselves? <laughs> Watch out for the tomatoes. Well, they shouldn't be in the road. We're here at Cinegrove Farms to meet Tony, and hopefully he'll let us know what this giant peeler's worth. What do you guys got? I think we got some kind of fruit peeler or something. That's a melon peeler. So is this commercial, residential? What is it? I'd say this is more along the lines of commercial. I think it's a little bit too much for residential. So this is something you would use? This is something somebody in the juicing business probably would use, yeah. You guys didn't happen to have any other blades for this, did you? I didn't even know what the heck this thing was. Yeah, normally they'll come with two or three blades for different sized fruit. Well? You guys want to try it? Yeah. Try honeydew. Ooh, honeydew. Well, I like the name of that. You ever eaten a honeydew? I've eaten a honeydew, have you? Can't remember. Once it starts in here, there's little nubs that roll the fruit around, and the blade just peels it around. It just pops right there off. You sure did. Easy as pie. OK, Ivy, let's get down to it. Tony. Yes. What is our peeler worth? 
Well, I'd say uh, the fact you're missing a couple pieces, the condition it's in, you're probably looking at um, 800 bucks. Nice. Now that is some big money. Any way you slice it. I want to taste it. I'm going to eat the meat, you eat the seeds. A cantaloupe can't ever grow inside somebody, can they, by eating the seeds? Only watermelons. Only, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Scored. What'd you get? Popcorn bags. Oh. I thought you said you scored. I did. I scored popcorn bags. Yeah, this is a nice pizza oven. That cart's worth 100 bucks. Pizza oven's got to be worth 100 bucks. Nice. These are steamer tables right here, bro. I get 75 bucks a piece for these. So we're slowly getting there. I could open up a restaurant with all this equipment. We could call it Sheets Eats. Whoa, man, check this out. What do you out. got? The silk screen thing? Is it? Help here. Oh, what's the matter? Is it heavy? Oh, no. Not at all. Uh, dough Express. So it's for doing something really fast. What does yeah, it say on that sign? Months. That little. Oh, that dude, they did burritos. It's a tortilla press. Dude. We have to get this dough press checked out. Let's see if we can make a little dough of our own. This thing's heavy. We're taking our dough press to Nick at Los Toros Mexican Restaurant Day. I hope it brings us. Macho De Niro. Well, wow. this is our little thing we told you about. That's a big one. OK. Probably want to put it down. Let's yeah. go check it out. Come you on. don't get to hear that very often. <laughs> I'm talking about that's a big one. Sit down right here. Oh, she's already making some tortillas. Very nice. Getting a head start on you guys. Yeah, this is our machine. We know it presses something. Well, what you have here is a dough press, specifically for tortillas. Looks pretty new. Well, let's go ahead and plug it in. Plug it in and see what it's all about. OK. Yeah, it's going to be hot. That's a good sign, then. Yeah. So you put the masa right here and then squish it down. This thing is also heated. This thing here regulates the thickness. You could probably make uh, pita bread, pizza, whatever. Mejor tortas aquí, no? She's saying that she can maybe do two or three of them on uh, here. You ain't oh. me. She said she likes to buy it for me. <laughs> the only Spanish that my dad knows is the Taco Bell menu. Well, the bottom line is, cuánto dinero por ese machine, amigo? A, a restaurant like ourselves, we would probably want to go more authentic because people want to see. Yeah, people but not everybody tortillas. can go buy their own Gloria. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but if you're looking to be a little more more efficient. I would probably give you a thousand dollars for it. Nice. Let's go. On that one. Always making money. So Must be good. She's clapping. Drive. Yeah, she's clapping for joy. Look at her. <laughs> Do I win? Heads, I eat a tortilla. Tails, I stay on my diet. the best. That was a good tortilla, I got to tell you. You want another one? No, thank you. Yeah, that's Very not really good for my diet right now. I know. What's this guy? Might as well. Oh, is this a gun or something? I'm scared. <laughs> no, it's a damn shovel. Oh, is it a big spoon or something? Oh, this is like to stir some monster stew. I mean, this really thing is as bad as falls me. It's hilarious. <laughs> We're gonna put this aside. I don't know if this goes to anything, but if not, this could be a cute little wall decor for your kitchen, maybe. Okay. Ooh, <gasps> now we're talking. <gasps> Ooh, something for food, maybe? Mashes up something, maybe like for spaghetti or something? I don't know. Ooh, this way too heavy. Ooh, this is nice. Is this copper? Wow. Now, if we're talking here, copper pot. Copper is expensive, and this thing is freaking heavy duty. So that's fantastic. Ugh. Jeez, this ain't no joke. Maybe this part goes right somewhere. Oh, yeah, here we go. So this is either for spaghetti, coffee, I don't know, but it's well made, and it's old school, and it's definitely worth getting checked out, so. All this stuff is a bunch of crap. Freaking dang it. Ugh. Madeline? Hey! <laughs> Here's the oh spoon I found. God. <laughs> I'm having my kitchen gear looked at by Madeline Barber, GM of Prince of Venice Food Truck. 
So, I mean, I'm always looking for a prince. Is there a prince in there, maybe, for sale? He's not. <laughs> <laughs> Though it is owned by a literal prince, hence the name wow. of Prince of Venice. Yeah, his grandfather was the last king of Italy. Really? Yep. Okay. But he's married anyway, so oh. you're out of luck. Guess I won't be Princess Mary of Venice. Dang it. So this is pretty cool. Lots of really vintage, old school, geeky pasta stuff. Yeah. So you have like this massive copper pot, which probably could stand to be cleaned. It looks like the Statue Grand. of Liberty in here. Yeah. yeah. It's also super old. You can tell by the patina in here. Probably the early 1900s. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I can still use this. You'd have to take other. care of it and like clean it out, but That's absolutely. Still. And then this is actually your pasta roller. So you would feed your dough in through here. You turn it over, and then it comes out the other side. OK. Did you look at this? No. There's actually a little stamp on here. Oh, wow. It says February 13, 1906. So that's really old and really cool. And then these guys right here are attachments oh, for okay. different widths of pasta. So this one is spaghetti. This one's more like the fettuccine kind of width. Mm -hmm. And this one's somewhere in between. So this guy is a flour grinder. Oh, OK. So you put all of your grain in here in the little thing. You open this up right here. Oh. And then that's what little determines grains. how fine a grain it is. And that's a spoon. The huge masses of people. Yeah, or <laughs> eating people up that try to eat your pasta. Yes. And then you don't want them to. So how much do you think this stuff is worth? All together, like gigantic weapons spoon, spoon yes. and all. Um, I'd say you could easily get 450. Nice. Okay, yeah. Cool. This is a really cool collection. Looks like I used my noodle when I bought this locker. You're good. I'm you good. Need any help? Nope. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I may not have a lot of friends, but I got a lot of money. King of the world!